Hello, everyone, and thank you, thank you, thank you for coming to uh, my master class on Ayur, I was going to say Ayurvedic medicine, but that is actually part of what we'll be talking about in our adaptogen uh, talk today. So it's a class on adaptogens, what they are, and I know I've learned a lot from my research, and I'd like to share that with you, because when we know just how these plants can assist us in our health, in our well-being. It's, it's, just, it's a gift. It's a gift from the earth. And the plants themselves, um, just, and there's so many of them. I mean, the mushrooms and the, the fungi alone are incredible. And so uh, I hope you enjoy uh, the class and, you know, get a few little nuggets from it to help uh, when you go into your kitchen tomorrow or when you're aware that, you know, you're feeling a bit stressed out, what can you do? What can I get from the store, from my cupboard that would actually help me feel better when you recognize that you are uh, stressed out? And because that six letter word is really, really important and something that we need to, to look at. So the plant realm has this ability to deal with that. Here we are. Welcome everyone. Thank you. And we're looking at adaptogens, nature's healing gifts. And it's your body in harmony with the plant realm. And a note line for our um, little class today, our W times five, that's the teacher and me. What are they? When or how do I use them? How do they work? How do they assist the body systems and the microbiome? Any precautions I need to take and your questions at the end. So first of all, a little disclaimer that I'd like to share. And basically keep in mind that plants are medicine and they need to be used with awareness and your inner wisdom. I'm a gut health advocate. I share my knowledge based on the research that I have discovered. And I want you to use your intuitive knowing to muscle test, to confirm, and to try slowly at first. And I want you to become your own advocate. You are unique and our gut microbiome is unique as our fingerprint. And yes, these plants are part of nature's resources. But these suggestions and the information here are suggestions only. They're not meant to replace supplements you're taking. And for those of you who are on prescription medications, check with your health practitioner before adding these plant medicines to your routine. And like our little purple friend here, we don't want craziness going on. We want a healthy balance and harmony. And what are adaptogens? Uh, simply put, they're a non-toxic herb, they're roots and fungi that work to increase or adapt the body's ability to resist stressors and restore the body to its normal physiological function. I just love that. You know, there they are just assisting us to look after those stressors that we kind of co-create with ourselves. And the medicinal practice of using these herbs can be traced back to at least 3000 BC in ancient Chinese and Ayurveda practices. And there's a Russian toxicologist, Nikolai Lazarev, uh, defined uh, an adaptogen as a plant that increases the state of non-specific resistance and applied to stress, meaning it can help protect the body against a range of stressors. And he discovered that in 1948. Uh, that's a long time ago. Oh, and if you could all mute yourselves, please. Thank you. A bit of ancient history. So 27 to 2600 uh, before common era, the rhodiola, which is on our on the right, the yellow flower, and the uh, reishi um, mushroom on the left uh, comes from Siberia, and it was used by Chinese emperors, and they go off to Siberia, and it was only used by royalty to give them 
the sort of vim and vigor that, that they needed back then. And in 220, uh, sort of um, conscious, uh, uh, CE, uh, the current time, um, the, old, the old fashioned AD, um, the Rishi was used um, and they had 262 uh, medicinal herbs that they, there was this Shenong herbal text and they actually had identified 262 herbs. Um, and so this is um, just under 2000 years ago. And in 7,900 to 1,100, rhodiola was used by the Vikings. And they would take this rhodiola uh, drink at, to enhance their strength when they went on their raids and their campaigns. Uh, you know, we think of these um, Vikings as just naturally strong, um, but they, they had a little help from the plant realm. And in 1000 to 1100, uh, the Kanti of West Siberia, they actually drink chaga tea for digestion and for detoxification. So there's sort of some earlier uh, historical uh, bits for the use of the uh, some of the plants. And in more recent times, there's a, it's a plant called Eleuthero and it's a root, and it's also called Siberian ginseng. And it was used in Russia in 1970s. I was reading now 3 million Russians uh, were uh, taking this um, herb um, just for their wellness. And cosmonauts were using it as well. And it was helping them just kind of be more in a, a calmer mood when they were uh, rotating around the earth. And uh, I was also looked up on WebMed and said, okay, what is this Eleuthero? And they were saying, there's not a lot of science behind it. And I just like to kind of mention here that, you know, according to sort of the ancient Chinese and the Ayurveda practices, they were using it for it could be you know thousands of years, hundreds of years. And they didn't have the scientific proof. They had their own stories and they were, the, the, the healing that was going on in, in people's bodies. So they, they knew and they used their intuitive wisdom um, and the ancient shamans and they, they understood the plant realm. And so that they were using it far long ago. So WebMed saying there's little scientific proof. So that's modern proof, uh, but we do have the, there's ancient wisdom. And then of course, whenever you are trying any of these, use your inner wisdom to determine is this good for me? And, and don't take chunks of something. Uh, and don't take gulps of, take cups of tea of something new you haven't tried before. So just make sure that you take, start, slow at first and, and not a big, uh, don't take huge amounts. And in 1986, the discovery of the nerve growth factor, the NGF factor, it's a protein supporting your brain neurons. And so, I mean, that was huge for just opening up a whole another plethora of science study. And they've been able to link lion's mane, which is this gorgeous, gorgeous uh, fungus uh, on the left in the production of that nerve growth factor. And what they're finding is that they can actually regenerate some of the neurons. And they've been doing studies with people with Alzheimer's and they're finding, and also cognitive um, issues where they can't remember things. And some of these people are getting positive results from lion's mean. And the other one is a uh, cordyceps and it's this gorgeous orange um, fungus that grows in sort of it's kind of dampish areas. And they apparently some Chinese athletes went into the Olympics unknown and won medals. And they were putting it down to the fact that they had this cordyceps 
used before and they were tested, you know, I went through all the testing and the, um, they did, well, they won the race and they were putting it down to the fact that they were taking the, the cordyceps. And now there's something that I want to share with you. Uh, and it's a, just a clip from a movie called Fantastic Fungi, or some people say fungi, uh, directed by Louis Schwartzberg. And it took 15 years to film and it's, it's on Netflix. And I don't know if any of you have watched it, but it's just absolutely stunning. The photography is beautiful. The message is profound because they're looking at how all these fungi assist the planet and the, the whole natural realm in just amazing, amazing ways. And this fellow, Paul Stamets, he's been studying mushrooms for, for decades. And they actually have a, a field study in British Columbia. He lives in the States. And they've bought um, sections of forest and they're doing experiments. And he's what he's discovered is just incredible. Um, so let's see. Um, oh, good. So just two minutes. My mission is to discover the language of nature. And I believe nature is intelligent. There is a world under the earth full of magic and mystery. It holds the consciousness of nature's connection to all living things. These mushrooms, they can heal you, they can feed you, they can kill you. It's not like a vegetable and it's not like a animal, but it's somewhere in between. They support life, they convert life. As you're walking through, it's about 300 miles of fungi under every footstep that you take. And that's all over the world. The bulk of the organism is growing underground and it's composed of these long threads called a mycelium. Almost everyone knows about the computer internet. The mycelium shares the same network design. It's amazing what we don't know about mushrooms. They really are a frontier of knowledge. You can filter water. You can create medicinal compounds almost on demand. They have incredible capacity to make things change very quickly. So I am super hopeful. The psychedelic members of the mushroom kingdom are fascinating. I have been a guide for around 350 psilocybin sessions. The most glorious part was that it made me feel more comfortable with living because you're not afraid of dying. We need to have a paradigm shift in our consciousness. What will it take to achieve that? We can heal the planet. We can build the future. And our world is fantastic. And just a beautiful, uh, beautiful film. And if you can, uh, it's about well, an hour and a half and sit with your family. Anyway, I was just, just felt um, just the beautiful message that that film has. And those are the plants that are assisting us with coming, or bringing our bodies back into balance. And that's, what healthy living can be about. Uh, because so often, you know, our gut microbiome is, is out of sync, you know, and sometimes, you know, it's just kind of who we are. Sometimes it's stressors from emotional things. Uh, people who eat a lot of processed food, their, their gut microbiome is, is, is off balance and all sorts of different things. And these plants are, it's such a beautiful service to humanity and to each one of us. And I'm just so grateful um, to be understanding that. And so some of the general benefits of these beautiful adaptogens, they can combat fatigue, enhance mental performance, ease depression and anxiety. It's a biological boost to handle stress. That's the overall um, 
thing that it, it, they do. There's short and long-term physical and mental assists. And this will help us be less likely to get sick because when that body is working that beautiful harmony and we're not stressed out, then our vibrational frequency is higher. There's more energy. It's like the chi energy, the life force energy that you're getting from the food, especially organic food. That life force energy is just, your body is just going, whoa, like more please. Uh, and in one of my past chats, uh, we talked about cortisol and the effect of destroying the bacteria in the gut. And it also wakes up those hidden bacteria and viruses in the colon. And this is more prolonged stress that those little hidden things, they just sit there. And I've always curious why, why as part of our divine design, are they there? And is there some other purpose that at some time maybe we need uh, that mm -hmm. bacteria and the viruses? And it's also been part of the, the extra, uh, the cortisol. It's been found to be part of the weight gain. Um, and so when you can control the stress, you lower the cortisol and you're lowering the stress hormones, which actually for some, a lot of people actually creates that weight gain. And stress, it creates such a cascade of physical responses, uh, your immune system, the hormones, your cognitive function, and even our internal clock called the circadian rhythm. So that's, that's the big guy that we need to be paying attention to. And this is a slide that I have from a previous presentation. And so just you look at it, um, the toxins, uh, they leak out and it's an overload for the liver, it affects the kidneys, the brain, the heart. And that's why the leaky gut and the inflammation in the gut causes inflammation throughout the body. And we need to sort of work on calming that down uh, through meditation and food, exercise. Yeah, there's environmental toxins in our air, the water and the food, uh, glyphosate is uh, one of these um, fertilizers, it's a chemical. And it basically it's in a lot of our food. And of course it's not labeled because it was put in the soil and they can't label the food you know, with that, um, but it's, it's in there, it's been tested scientifically. And it overtaxes the gut biome. And that gut biome is there in such loving service for us, all those bacteria, fungus, there's parasites, there's the achae, um, and there's more of them than there are cells in our body. And they are what is maintaining our health. And so in honor of them, we need to really kind of focus on what is it I can feed my body to bring it back into that beautiful harmony. And, and because 70% of our uh, immune system starts in our gut. That's where it starts. And when that gut microbiome is off balance, then so is the immune system. Because, and that's our protective barrier. And you don't think about it very much. You've got this gut, you eat your food and you drink your water and then you poop everything out. And we don't understand the whole synergy of the food and, and everything in our body, all our systems are working incredibly. It's that beautiful divine design. And we kind of need to pay a little more attention. And I just feel that when you know something, then you've got a choice. You've got a choice to have it or not have it. And I encourage you to be scientists, be your own advocate and be your own scientist so that you can discover what it is in you that works for you and what doesn't. And uh, too much stress, uh, research is there and is showing increase in type two diabetes and Cushing syndrome, which is the whole, you've got, it's a whole stress hormone um, overload and heart disease and leads to inflammation and a weak immunity and we can make that choice and we make a difference. And I read somewhere that in another 10, 15, 20 years, uh, diabetes is going to be the 
I hate to say it, the pandemic, it's going to be huge because there's so many people that are pre-diabetic and they don't realize it because there's no real symptoms. They don't, you know, they might just notice something. Um, I mean, diabetics, you know, there's, they don't feel well. They're going to the bathroom a lot. And there's a lot of symptoms that show up when you're actually diabetic and you need the insulin. And, but pre-diabetics, I mean, it takes decades. So all these toxins that the body's dealing with, it actually takes a long time for it to show up as a symptom in your body. And so just being aware of, you know, what if you got, you know, little skin rashes or whatever it is that's on your body that wasn't there? Can you say, oh, I didn't notice that before. Or the way you feel, maybe you have to eat something. So just be more aware it makes such a big difference. So how do they work? Uh, I'd like to introduce you to, first of all, gas. And we know that when your food ferments, proper, if you don't have proper food combining, you wolfed your food down and you get the gas that is the body telling you, whoops, something's not right. Um, and just a little side step on that one. For those of you who don't eat many lectins, um, not lectins, sorry, uh, sorry, lentils, uh, the pulses, and uh, that I use all the time now, uh, part of my mainstay you really need to rinse those all those beans and seeds and lentils and uh, rin rinse them almost till the water becomes clear because they've got saponins which protects the seed in the soil but it also can irritate uh, the gut and so it's just it just do a, a quick rinse and then uh, away you go. So this general adaptation syndrome, this gas, it's a three-stage response. You've got alarm, resistance, and exhaustion. And the alarm is, okay, you're stressed, uh, you're feeling stressed, I mean, even it could be a physical thing. And the adaptogens help us stay in the resistance phase longer so that we don't get to the exhaustion. Because once you get to the exhaustion, then it's like, oh my gosh, I mean, that's when you really need some help. But when you're in the resistance stage, that's something where you can actually do something about. And it's so the adaptogen has a stimulating effect that holds off the exhaustion. You know, some of them will find out that some of it, some of them give you more energy. So that to kind of get you through that little hurdle that you need to get through. And they allow us to be more balanced and carry on uh, this adaptogen um, oh, with, when you're in that period of resistance, um, the adaptogens help calm and they work with the hypothalamus, your pituitary gland and your adrenal glands, which are uh, the la last ones are located just above your kidney and they produce the hormone cortisol, which we need for certain things, but it's when it's too much. And this is called the HPA axis and it's your stress response system. And from my own experience, it can affect the thyroid as well. I had my blood tested and the doctor said, well, your thyroid, your T3, T4 is just over the, it's off the roof. You know, it should be something like under five and mine was 63. And she said, oh, I think you need to go on Synthroid. And I'm going, well, as being a past nurse, I go, no, that sounds like uh, cortisol, uh, prednisone. So I did my own research and I found a friend who did energy work. And she found that my HPA axis was out of alignment. So my body wasn't communicating with itself in the ways that it needed to. So she did so, a little, just a little energy fix. I went back um, and got my blood tested again. And it went all the way down to a 23 just with that energy work. And then I cut out the sugars and I just kind of watched what I was eating. And now it's a much more stable le level, which is awesome. So lots of, lots of adaptogens. We've got herbs, we've got fungi, you've got roots. And there's this lovely little picture. A lot of these I'm not talking about today. You can go on and do your own research, be your own uh, scientific advocate. And there's astragalus, 
aloe vera. I have a plant in my house that I probably should take more advantage of. Uh, blueberries, you've got uh, ginseng, you've got turmeric. Nettle is a, is a wonderful one. You've got ginger. And the Tulsi well, I'll be looking at and the licorice root, I'm not talking about today. And I'm not talking about the Moringa leaves. And so those are ones that you can explore on your own. And so we'll just we'll look at a few of them. Rhodiola, because of its historical use um, by the, well, the ancient uh, Chinese rulers and the Vikings, uh, the root contains 140 active ingredients found to inhibit stress, reduce depletion of important brain neurotransmitters. So these, these adaptogens are just, and the research they're doing is just uh, really exciting. It aids sleep and it can enhance your mood. And it also, I think there were some cyclists that took this rhodiola, you know, like the Vikings, maybe their coach said, you know what, I've, I've heard, heard what the Vikings did. And so they, it enhanced the cyclist performance and they were able to cycle further and without their heart rate getting really high. So it, it, the heart rate was sort of maintained at a, at a good balance. So that's the rhodiola and the root, and there's the flower there. And Tulsi and holy uh, basil is another one. And I have that as a tea, I have a, a powder. And it's widely used as a calming herbal tea and Ayurvedic medicine, uh, using the tea, uh, making tea, using the, the leaves and people you cook uh, with uh, the basil. And it just kind of helps those frazzled nerves and assist with uh, indigestion as well. And it's got a kind of a peppery taste and just something to play with. So if you haven't tried the holy basil, uh, I would recommend it. And this one, I just love the sound of it, ashwagandha. It just has that beautiful healing sound to it. And it's an Ayurvedic herb used to combat stress, used for centuries. And modern studies are actually reinforcing its the, the historical use of it to reduce stress and anxiety in adults. And in Sanskrit, it means kind of the smell of a horse and horses have that incredible strength. So you, you drink it and you've got that horse strength um, that kind of assists you um, through uh, your day. And I'll, I'll mention it here and I'll say it again later. These adaptogens don't work overnight. I mean, they might, uh, but generally speaking, it takes time for them to work in your body. So they're going to different parts of your body that needs it. And we have an intention that I want more energy. I want to be stronger. So I could take ashwagandha. Well, you know what? There could be other qualities in the ashwagandha that actually will assist your body in different ways. Like there's a hidden figures uh, uh, in our body. And just like when the, in the short video, the woman was walking across the forest floor and the mycelium, we don't see the mycelium, but they're the biggest part of the plant. And that little, that little sort of bulb that we see on the, the forest floor or the, the tree, that's like a little bud of the huge, immense um, size of these um, adaptogens, and especially uh, the mushrooms, uh, especially. And just sort of a warning, it's uh, not, uh, ashwagandha is not for pregnant women. And if you've got thyroid issues, um, depending on what that is, um, not recommended. You can try a little bit. But also, if you're on medication, especially, just to check with your a practitioner. And uh, fantastic fungi, mushrooms. We've got reishi, we've got cordyceps, you've got chaga, and we've got the lion's mane, which we talked about. And the reishi, these are sort of really popular ones. Uh, they've captured, I guess, the attention of athletes and scientists. And reishi's got these antioxidant properties and because of that can assist with the immune system. 
and the modern use of Vichy uh, includes a cardiovascular support, uh, creates a healthy stress response, and so sort of healthy energy and stamina, and apparently enhances sleep. So that's the Vichy, and growing off that tree, the gorgeous colors, the cordyceps, and it's well known to have energizing effects due to its beta-glucans, which are thought to have anti-inflammatory properties. And it helps you use the oxygen more efficiently. And I think that's why some of these athletes uh, have been taking it. So your muscles are able to work harder for longer. And it's also got uh, antioxidant effect and the potential to increase the energy, boost the immune system and reduce stress. Because when your immune system's working and you're not stressed out, your body it has got this vitality in it. And that's what certainly what I uh, want to have is as I go into you know, the next few decades, uh, I want to maintain that youthfulness uh, and the energy. The chaka mushroom, another kind of interesting looking mushroom. And uh, it's apparently one of the richest sources of antioxidants in nature. And you just look at the chunk uh, and that's only a piece of it. And it comes as this huge, massive mushroom. And they're commonly used to reduce inflammation and boost immunity. And we've talked about the lion's mane and they have used it in cognitive functions in uh, Japanese studies. And these, uh, they, it was six weeks and these uh, middle, uh, different age, I think from 40 up to 80 years old. And they actually saw an improvement in their cognitive function. They could remember better. And so more research is being done on that. And there's this polysaccharide that helps promote the immune function. And one study, um, they uh, found that it actually had an effective regulation of the mucosal lining because that mucus lining in our intestine uh, helps that's our defense system so if we've got a strong mucosal lining then that's a, a good defense system for what's coming down the tube and dealing with all these other endotoxins environmental toxins that our gut uh, is needing to deal with and another little chart that I got from healthline.com and it lists the adaptogens and the potential benefit. And I'm not a scientist, I love science, but I have not researched all this information. And so I ask you to look at it with um, an open mind and you can always check it. You've got uh, uh, astragalus, apparently with, uh, helps with fatigue. And then the goji berry uh, helps also boost energy, physical and mental performance, calmness and sense of well-being, and can improve sleep. So there you go. And goji berries, and I'm not sure if you've created tea with that. Uh, you can try making a tea or just munching on some goji berries. And the luthero uh, root from, um, that they use in Russia a lot and it helps with the mental fatigue, apparently. And this Jayagulan, and I'm not sure where that comes from, reduces stress and boosts endurance. Licorice root, reducing stress. And the rhodiola we've talked about. And they also talk about the Shisandra berry, the magnolia berry, uh, boosting endurance, mental performance, and your working capacity. And the Tulsi holy basil we've talked about and the turmeric, and it helps boost brain function, reduces depression, and it's an amazing gut digestive assist. Um, so those are a few little more goodies. And some other ones that we're not talking about is the Shisandra, which apparently boosts the memory, focus, and mental performance. And the maca root, which boosts mood and energy levels, and nettle leaf, reducing stress and tension, and licorice root, boosting endurance and overall energy. So you look at all these amazing adaptogens and looking at how they've kind of taken the health food industry, food industry, certain supplement industry by storm, 
because people are looking for that boost of energy. And then you kind of wonder, okay, why is it we need these? I mean, it's fantastic. And I'm, I'm not um, saying you shouldn't have them because I'm taking them myself. Uh, I've got some ashwagandha powder in my uh, cupboard that I've been taking um, just off and on uh, over a, a, a bit of time. And so that, yeah, because I mean, there's things going on in the world right now. There's a lot of stress that people are under. And, you know, if we can get this beautiful assist in the plants, then that will help us a lot. And just a little thing about antioxidants from the Harvard Medical School. I'm not going to read it all, but, you know, antioxidants, it's a general term. It's actually a chemical property rather than a nutritional property. And it's a compound that contracts unstable molecules called free radicals that damage the DNA, the cell membranes, and other parts of the cell. And because free radicals lack a full complement of electrons, they steal electrons from other molecules and damage them in the process. So the antioxidants neutralize these free radicals by giving up some of their own electron, uh, electrons. And so they make the sacrifice and they, actual, they act as a natural off switch for the free radicals, which assists our entire body. And that helps break a chain reaction that can affect the other molecules and the other cells in the body. And uh, free radicals are damaging by their nature, but they're uh, an inescapable part of life. And we generate them in response to environmental toxins and insults, tobacco, smoke, ultraviolet rays and air pollution. But they're also a natural byproduct of a normal process in the cell. And when the immune system musters to fight intruders, for example, the oxygen it spins off, uh, an army of free radicals that destroys the viruses, bacteria, and damaged body cells in an oxidative burst. And then uh, there's a normal production and it occurs during exercise. And so, you know, you know, they're necessary. But again, when you have too much and, and when you include these all these other things that your body's trying to deal with, then these uh, antioxidants and these adaptogens are assisting our body to be able to deal with that. And so things to consider going forward. Uh, these amazing plants and fungi, can, they do, they support us in so many beautiful ways. And I will just invite you to add gratitude to your teas, your roots, your spices because they adapt to what your body needs in the moment or over time. And you know what other ways can you support your body? So we've got exercise, we've got eating fresh organic food. And if you can go to your local farmer's market, there's a few left in Vancouver, go to them and just share that wealth of information and that food that they have brought to your table. And uh, yeah, and getting good sleep at night, that's important, you know? And when you stop, don't eat in the evening, your brain is getting uh, this blood wash, it's detoxifying, and you're waking up the acomensia, which are bacteria in your colon, and they work at nighttime, and they sort of clean up the mucus lining, they kind of chew away at it, but then the colon works in creating more mucus, kind of healthier, fresher mucus, I guess. And that only happens when you're sleeping and you haven't eaten before you go to bed. And so just something to keep in mind. And, you know, find those quiet times. You know, if you meditate, that's fantastic. And it doesn't have to be hours. It can be just five minutes or 10 minutes. And take those walks in the forest. Because those forest walks, they actually provide more oxygen to your body. And just take, the, take those breaks in nature. And with, there are a lot of supplements containing adaptogens. So make sure that the other ingredients are healthy too. You know, I mean, they, they pile all these things together and say, oh, let, let's have this little medley and put it together. And if you use the muscle testing that I use, you know, do the body sway technique and you figure out what, you know, show me yes, and your body will move in a, a certain direction. And we say, show me no, 
then the body moves in a different direction. You go to the store, you go to the pharmaceutical department, the shoppers or lend them drugs and say, you know, just you can hold the bottle of the vitamin C, there's like 10 different kinds. Is this in my highest for my body to be in my whole optimal wellness? And see what it says. And you go, and I've done that. And I'll go, okay, no, nope, not that one, not that one. And then I'll find one. And sometimes that intuitive knowing, your total body consciousness is saying, yes. And you get this feeling going, oh, yeah, that's, that's what I need. And do you need to take it every day? Maybe, maybe not. Again, muscle test it. And because if you take two one day, Maybe that will do you good for a day and you don't need to take it the next day. So it's just creating that awareness until we get to that place where we just intuitively know. And it's a skill set we have, but we've forgotten how to use it. And a few little other healthy little things. Um, when you're in stress, it's the flight of freight and there's no or very poor digestion going on. And when you're eating, you need to be in that rest and digest mode. And that's why you need to, when you're eating your meal, you know, take a breath, slow down, chew those bite, chew that food 25 to 40 times. So it's mush. So you're assisting your body in the whole digestive process. And you know, no cell phones, no TV, and this lovely soothing tea from a very special friend of mine. And it's called soothing tea and it's equal parts of cumin, coriander and fennel seeds. And you steep it in some water for a period of time. And it's just very soothing and relaxing. And of course those spices also assist with our digestion. And we want a healthy digestion and re to reduce the inflammation. And then there's a little tray of different uh, spices and all those spices actually assist our body, bringing balance and harmony and calm uh, to it. And you, uh, your body in harmony with the planet and with the earth herself. So when you're preparing your food, when you're eating it, you know, take a couple of breaths before you actually eat your food and just enjoy it, you know, and just connect with the earth, where it's come from. You know, if you know the country, you just think, Thank the soil and the country that it came from and, and just thank it for healing and bringing your body into that beautiful balance. And breath is such a, a beautiful way. And so now that comes, uh, that's an end of uh, the presentation. Uh, I invite you to join my app. It's called Authentic Seek of Design. I've got lots of free resources under topics there's health and wellness, there's gut microbiome, there's a quaking aspen meditation that takes you with music and aspens in one aspen tree in Sawasan, British Columbia, and a whole forest mm -hmm. of aspens in Ontario. And there's a 10 top tips your gut buddies will love you for. It's a PDF in the special offer section. And thank you for being you. And thank you for coming to listen to this presentation and just blessings of love on your journey to wellness. And if you ever want to contact me, uh, rosiesjoy11 at gmail.com. And uh, thank you so much for coming and listening to the presentation. And what I think I will do is I will pause the recording there. Thank you so much. And again, the class on adaptogens.